love with an Enneagram 9, this video's for you. How about some Netflix? Let's just stay in bed. Whatever you wanna do, doesn't matter to me. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Enneagram 9's The Peacemaker in Romantic Relationships. For more videos about the Enneagram, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I put out new videos every Monday and Thursday, and it really helps me out when you do subscribe. By the way, hello, I'm Abby, and I'm here to help you discover you. Let's discover some more about Enneagram 9, shall we? Whether you're dating or married to an Enneagram 9, you've probably known Notice that above all else, they desire to have inner stability and peace. That said, there are also some very annoying things about Enneagram 9. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven annoying things that Enneagram 9s do in romantic relationships. But keep in mind, this is all in good fun. I just wanna explore the Enneagram types in a funny, lighthearted way. By no means should this make you feel bad about yourself. By no means should you judge another Enneagram number. I'm just here to make you laugh. Uh, so keep that in mind while you watch this video. Number one, nines desire harmony in their romantic relationships. They want things to be equal in their relationship and they really need a partner who's going to gently affirm them without any negative pressures. However, if a romantic partner is pressuring an Enneagram nine to do something that they don't want to do, nines can get quite stubborn. In fact, Suzanne Stabile calls Enneagram nines possibly the most stubborn number on the Enneagram. So guys, don't take advantage of Enneagram nines and try not to tell them what to do. Uh, otherwise, you might get a reaction like this. Hey, we need to go now, we're gonna be late. You need to hurry up. Is it really that bad if we're late? Yeah, I would like to be on time for my mom's birthday dinner. Can you chop chop? Just moving in slow motion. You're just slow motion. She's turning 60. Really? I Number two. We talk about this a lot on my channel, but there's a reason why. Enneagram nines and conflict avoidance. Because their core fear is being in conflict with others, tight nines avoid discord with a 10 foot pole. Their reaction to conflict is to withdraw and shut down. In romantic relationships, this can happen if a type nine is being taken advantage of and ignored, or if they're being directly confronted with an issue. If a nine is out of alignment, they're gonna totally check out from this situation and then distract themselves with things that bring them comfort. Can we talk about what happened earlier? What happened? I don't remember anything. I tried to talk to you about how I snapped earlier and then you started singing musical theater hits from the 2000s and now you're playing Animal Crossing. Good morning, animals. Planting my pumpkins for Halloween. The world's gonna wake up and see. My animals and me. So I'm guessing you're not gonna talk about this. Am I correct in assuming that? Number three, when nines are out of alignment, they can ignore their own needs. This is a strategy that some nines use to keep the peace. Beth McCord calls it going along to get along. So if nines just pretend they don't have needs, they can eliminate any possible tension in a relationship that might arise from those needs. The problem with this is twofold, and boy am I fancy for using the word twofold. I should be just sipping tea on a Riviera somewhere. Uh, but anyway, here are the two issues. Number one, if a nine has needs, but they don't assert them, and then those needs aren't met, a nine will get upset and angry. And number two, in a romantic relationship, it can be really exhausting for a partner to kind of guess or suppose what the nine's needs and desires are. Communication about those needs can sometimes just feel like a nine is parroting back what you, they think that you wanna hear or parroting back like what your own needs are instead of telling you actually what their real desires are in life. Okay, so we'll go to my parents on Thanksgiving. Sure. Well, I just wanna make sure that's what you want. That's what I want. To go to my parents. To go to your parents. Okay, sounds like a plan. I'm gonna have to listen to your dad talking politics the entire night. Okay, so you do have an opinion about what we do. No, 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 I don't have any opinions. I'm Switzerland. Number four. Enneagram nines are in the gut triad. If you wanna know more about the centers of intelligence triad, you can check out my Enneagram basics video starting around the 115 mark. I've linked it right here. Essentially, type nines operate from their gut instincts and emotionally struggle with anger. This may surprise you because nines are named the peacemaker, which sounds like the total opposite of an angry person. But nines actually suppress their anger, just stuffing it down so that they can keep the peace. This means that when nines are out of alignment, they can 
can have passive aggressive anger or their anger just makes them go completely numb. In relationships, nines will be mad, but they're not gonna tell you about it. They're gonna want you to know, but they're gonna try to hint at it through subtle clues and just hope that you understand that they're mad at you. You good? Perfect. Okay. Are you sure? Because it sounds like you're taking a lot of frustration out on that pan. Just cooking us dinner. Okay. Something is definitely wrong. Why would something be wrong? I'm just cooking and cleaning and doing all the chores for the millionth time by myself. Everything's fine. Number five. In relationships, sometimes type nines can agree to things even if they have absolutely no intention of following through. Basically, they will say yes because they're afraid of setting boundaries and disrupting the peace. It's not that they're flaky, it's just that type nines have a very limited amount of energy to spend throughout the day, and it can be really exhausting trying to live up to everyone else's expectations. Hey, can you come with me to this socially distanced picnic thing? It's for work. Sure. Cool. Okay, well, we should probably go then because it starts soon. Okay. I'm getting my shoes on. Are you? Because it looks like you're watching the office. I'll drive. I'm just grabbing my keys and my mask. D did you just change into pajamas? Oh, shoot. I, I'm i just not ready to go. You're going to have to just go without me. Good night. Number six. The train has arrived at Sensitivity Station. When Enneagram 9s are in a stress path, they move to the average and unhealthy traits of an Enneagram 6. This means that they can take everything personally, become really reactive, and go on the defensive. In romantic relationships, this can translate as an Enneagram 9 having a difficult time accepting critique. I noticed you transferred some money between our accounts. Would you mind just tracking that in our budget software? You think I'm bad with money? No, 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 not at all. It's just it's easier to stick to our financial goals if everything's recorded. Just because I went to art school and you went to business school doesn't mean that I can't be financially smart. I'm not saying that. I didn't say, I'm not, that's not. And finally, number seven. An Enneagram 9's core weakness is sloth, but that does not mean laziness. If you know an Enneagram 9, you know that they're really hard workers. The slothfulness that I'm talking about is more of a spiritual thing. Nines can fall asleep to their passions and self-worth in order to keep the peace with the people around them. In relationships, this weakness can be interpreted as laziness, which is super harmful for a relationship. I've actually made an entire video about Enneagram type 9's and the harmful stereotype of laziness, so if that's something that you're interested in, I highly recommend. I've linked it right here. Um, this isn't actually an annoying thing that nines do, but it can affect a romantic relationship. So I am mentioning it in this video. You're going to bed early. It's been a long day. It's 4 p.m. Like I said, it's been a long day. Okay. I hope this helps you navigate your relationship either as a nine or as a partner to a nine. The most important thing to remember if you're a nine is that your presence matters. If you're wondering what to watch next, I am making more of these videos for every number, so I'm linking them in the description down below and in this little card right here. Thanks for watching.